Today I want to show you a pair of reactions that I think demonstrate really quite nicely the difference between detonation and deflagration, the two sorts of processes that can occur in explosive reactions. When you actually watch them, there isn't all that much difference at normal speed. Detonation sounds louder. You put your hands over your ears. But they're both pretty spectacular. So the first reaction, which is in a detonation, is a reaction between red phosphorus, the less reactive allotrope of phosphorus, and potassium chlorate, which is used for percussion caps in toy guns and also for the old-fashioned guns. When you fired these muskets and so on, they often used a percussion cap to get it going. This reaction, you take a mixture of the two and put it on the surface, on the little plate, and then hit it with a hammer. When the hammer comes down, it has quite a lot of kinetic energy and some of that kinetic energy is converted into heat by the shock wave, and that is enough to cause the detonation. Three, two, one. <coughs> and as you watch with the hammer coming down, as it hits, you can see this explosion shooting out sideways. When it's left, afterwards, the residue, you can see a ring of red phosphorus where it has been blown apart. It's called a detonation because it goes off very suddenly. One minute it's sitting there and bang, it's gone. And this is used to set off other explosives and most explosives need to have a detonator in order to make them go off. The detonator will be a reaction which is very often fired by mechanical force, for example, the pin when you're firing a bullet. The detonation is needed to set off the explosion quickly. When you fire a bullet, you want the gun to go off as quickly as possible, or your enemy may be upon you before the bullet has come out. But you don't want the main explosive in the barrel of your gun to go off really quickly, because it would just blow the gun apart and you would injure yourself and your enemy would arrive uninjured. The second demonstration is a much more smooth and slow reaction, which is the reaction of cotton wool with liquid oxygen. You've seen us demonstrating this before, but when you've seen it, it has gone with a great whoosh. It's going to be dark. Go ahead. OK. Yeah because we've been filming it at normal speed. When you film it at high speed, it's much slower and more poetic. You see the match slowly approaching the cotton wool, and then the cotton wool begins to warm up inside, partly because the concentration of oxygen is probably higher inside because it's trapped in the fibres, and also because the heat can't get out so fast. So you can see the reaction building up and suddenly the flame comes out. And then the reaction builds up with more and more intensity until it completely washes out the, the picture and you have this huge white screen in front of you. This slow build up is just what you need, say in a gun barrel, to accelerate the projectile as it's coming out without blowing up the gun itself. But I think in this video what is nice is that you can see that after this there are one or two pieces of the cotton wool that are left almost completely untouched, presumably on the outside. And there's one crazy piece that takes off rather like the lunar module coming off the surface of the moon and disappears out of the top and then some white pieces gradually come down again. So in terms of watching it, the deflagration is really much more interesting. But chemists use the power of explosives by choosing whether they have a deflagrating explosive or a 
detonating explosive so that they can get the effect they want from the particular use of these explosives. And quite often, the real effect is using the two together, a detonator to get the thing to start just when you want, and then a deflagrating explosive to produce the steady push that you want to propel some sort of projectile.